let's take a look at this next variation on this play equipment. So here we have uh, a couple landforms that have trees planted on them, and we also have this rail-like play structure in the middle. You can see it more in detail here. And I think I envisioned having like a net in between these two uh, rails, maybe some support posts that hold it up, of course, and uh, that it would be kind of like a play structure that kids could play on. So this says create play landforms using patch and create net structure using sweep one. So let's look again at this model in a little bit more detail. Once again, I have elevated the contours to their heights that I have determined. Um, and I haven't drawn in all of the contours. I've just used a base contour at the bottom of the landform and a top contour at the top of the landform. It's not always necessary to draw in every single contour that you want to create. So I'm going to select these and I can select multiple objects that I want to patch at the same time. And I'll just give those a preview and see um, how those are working. So when I've selected all of these, I'm ending up with a, a sheet under here that is going through all of these structures. So um, if I was to do this, then I would basically need to trim that using the profiles of these landforms. So instead of accepting that, um, I'm going to just do these individually. So now we have our three play landforms. We also have this uh, green space, which actually slices through these two landforms. So what I'm going to do is um, project that up to these curves so that I can split them and create a grassy surface here. So I'll use the project curves command over here, select my uh, surfaces that I want to split, press enter, and now you can see the line from this base object has been projected up onto those uh, surfaces. So I'm going to group those together using G for group. And now I can select both of these surfaces and use SP for split, select my group, hit enter. And now I have um, separated these as um, objects that can be materialized in a different way. So to complete this base ground, I could also draw in a plane. I'm going to draw a rectangular plane using the outside of the playground as my first point and the other side of the playground playground as my second point and then I can split this surface using this um, ground uh, polyline and now I can change the material of all of this to my grass. Now you see there is um, some overlapping here and that's just because of the um, the JPEG that's underneath it. So if I was to turn that off, then those intersecting lines would go away. But we can also get rid of um, the, the surface that we don't need that's underneath some of these playgrounds, play mounds. So if we select this again and split it using the base of each of the play mounds, then I can um, deselect the ground surface and delete the remaining surfaces which are at the base of these play mounds if I wanted these to be hollow for example and I can do the same with this object here split that and get rid of the extra so now I have a very clean base that is just uh, one complete surface without any um, sort of extra surfaces underneath that are overlapping Okay, so that's the base, and now uh, we want to create this rail play structure here. I'm just going to turn off some of the layers here so that I can outline um, exactly how this was created. So at a basic level, I drew um, this shape, this kind of uh, oval saddle shape, and I drew it as a flat plane on the ground. You can see that here, and then I offsetted it to create the inner rail here. So this is just an offset from this line here. But then I wanted to create a saddle shape. So what I did was I drew vertical lines all around at different heights. And I just draw vertical lines by using the L command. L is for line. And then using V for vertical. 
and setting it to a specific point. So um, if I do 0.5, you can see the line goes up to where I've uh, asked it to go to 0.5. So that would um, be a line that is 0.5 of a meter tall. And basically what I did was I just uh, drew these vertical lines all around the edge of the oval and I lifted them up. So I made them higher where I wanted this saddle shape to go higher and I made them lower where I wanted it to dip down towards the ground. So then I used um, for this curve, I used the interpolate um, points curve and I just connected the tops of all of these vertical lines. And if I do this, it will uh, create the same basic uh, saddle shape, um, but it will give it the heights that it needs. So that's my rail that we're going to use to sweep. And then to create a pipe shape, I wanted to have a circular profile that would be um, swept around. So that's what this circle is. If you want to draw a circle, you can go to the circle command over here and use the drop down list. I used the, um, the vertical circle. So I did um, this one right here, which is a vertical circle. And I started it at the center point like this. And you can see it draws it vertically on the Z axis. So you can't draw it flat or any other direction. It's drawing it vertical. And I just set a um, diameter of 0.5. Um, so if I do 0.5 and press enter, then it automatically shapes the circle to that size. That's a little too big for me, so I'm going to reduce it to 0.2. And now you see it uh, reduces the diameter of the circle and I can select a location anywhere around where I want the circle to be. But I want it to be kind of um, perpendicular to the profile that I'm going to sweep it along. So in plan view, I can, um, I can just use my plan view to sort of decide how I want to orient this. So I'm gonna try to orient it as perpendicular to the um, rail as possible, just like that. Now I already drew one over here, so I'm not actually gonna use this circle. I just wanted to show you how you could um, draw a vertical circle as a rail if you wanted to. So now I'm going to use the sweep one command, where before we had two rails, in this one we just have one. We just have this one rail that we want to sweep the cross-section curves around. I'm going to just go to sweep one. I can also access it from a surface menu here. It says select rail, so I select this as our rail. Now it says select sweep shapes, and this can be um, open or closed polylines as well as points if you so choose and I'm going to select this circle, and now I'm going to press enter. It's going to ask me to drag the seam point to adjust. I'm just going to um, allow it to be automatic and press enter. And this is going to um, show me a preview and bring up this dialog box. So we can just rotate around the rail. And as you see, the pro circle profile has been rotated along this rail to create a pipe form. And that looks pretty good to me, so I'm just going to accept those settings. And you can see now we have a really nice clean rail going along the edge. And that's really awesome, but um, in our picture, there's actually two rails and they look like they're really closely aligned. So how did I get that inner rail? What I did was I just um, copied this, this rail. So I'm going to just turn off that other layer and I use CO for copy, and I use the in place command. So now I have a copy of this rail and it's in the exact same spot as the original. And then I'm just going to uh, use my gumball to scale this down uniformly. So by pressing shift and holding down on any of the axes um, toggles that you see here, I can just uh, begin to resize this and I'm going to go into my plan view and just try to resize it according to that baseline that I have here. So that looks pretty good. And if I go over to my perspective view and I check out this rail, I can see that I have a rail that is pretty much um, the same as the original. It's just offset into the internal. And um, and yeah, I could I could 
adjust it a little bit if I want. Maybe I want to bring it down a little bit so that um, it matches up um, on the edges better. For example, this one looks kind of high, so I might just bring it down a little bit more. That looks pretty good. And you could envision now um, another operation where maybe you do a sweep two with a line in between to create a net form that follows the internal um, internal part of this. You could also then uh, build out some supports like pipe supports for this play structure uh, by drawing a circle on the ground and then projecting it up using either extrude or sweep one. Um, so there's lots where this could go from here. All right, we have a second version of this model and it says create net structure using extrude curve along curve. So in this one, we have the exact same setup but I'm going to show you another command that does almost the same thing as this sweep one command did up here. So we're going to use a command called extrude curve along curve. As soon as you start typing in extrude, you see a whole bunch of extrusion options. We're looking for this one, extrude curve along curve. It's going to ask you to select the curves to extrude. So um, in this case, we're selecting the circle first because this is the one we want to extrude. Press enter, and then it says select path curve near start. And just double check these settings here. You want to output a surface. Um, you want to output a solid, yes, but uh, this is going to create a solid automatically because it's um, a circle that's enclosed. And um, all of the rest we can just leave the same. So I'm going to um, select the curve and you can see that if we take a look at this shape let's look a little more in detail about what's happening here so it starts out as a circle here it travels along the curve and then it does something interesting which is that um, it kind of begins to bend in so if you can imagine this circle being drawn along this curve it's not being rotated as it goes along the curve like it does in sweep one. So what's happening is the, the circle is staying in the same orientation as it is, uh, just as we've drawn it here. So let, if I copy this, for example, from the top of this line and to the top of this line, this is basically what um, extrude curve along curve is doing. It's taking the curve and it's extruding it, but it's not rotating it along the, um, the alignment curve. It's just keeping it in the same orientation. So as it, the curve comes along here, it becomes bigger again and orients um, along this edge. So it becomes thicker and then it becomes thinner again as it maintains its orientation and goes along the curve on this side. So extrude curve along curve is a good command to use in certain situations, but in this situation, it wouldn't lead to the right outcome. But I did want to show you that command because in Rhino, there's always more than one way to do something. And it's important to know um, which tool to use in which circumstance.